Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Brayden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, as you can tell, I am back in the Freedom Hut because this is an important episode that we have to talk about something where the New York City Mayor, Eric Adams, in his quest to rid, of, rid New York City of all gun crime, may have actually crossed the line because there's a lot of gray area here which we need to discuss. And this, what I'm about to show you, is how governments attempting to get control and safety can very quickly, with a flip of a switch, go really wrong, which we know all too well in the gun community. That's what we're going to talk about. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. It's going to be linked in the description box below. And now, let's get to it, because we have got to talk about this and send this one out, because this is really important. And let me know what you guys think of the potential here. Check this. NYPD gun violence tracking database draws concern for civil, from civil liberties advocates. Uh, yeah, anytime a government entity has any type of an infringement upon a naturalized right enshrined in the Second Amendment on a list, I get my ears a little, little whoa, 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 what's that about? All right, let's check this out because this, like I said, it can go real wrong real fast, but here's what's happening. As results from the report loom, now they're talking about something else in the article, you can check it out if you want. Reporters at Gothamist partnered with The Trace, a nonprofit outlet covering gun violence in America, which is left-leaning. It is uncovering another database the department has kept under wraps since its creation earlier this year that surveils people it believes have an involvement in recent shootings. Now, this is the, the anti-gun task force that Eric Adams has so proudly touted, okay? That's what they're talking about, and they're putting some very interesting things here to light. Check this out. An NYPD supervisor told the outlets that the Gun Recidivist Investigation Program list was developed shortly after Mayor Eric Adams was sworn in on January 1 with no official announcement or news coverage. What I don't like about that is it happened in the dark of night. No one said anything. No, nothing was announced. But listen to what it was because they knew that this would be a problem. Check this out. Again, Gun Recidivist, Re Recidivist Investigation Program. Okay, So basically recurring gun crime list. Quote, we identified individuals that have been involved in multiple shooting incidents over the past two years. Okay. One of those shooting incidents, this individual must actually pull the trigger, LaPetrie said. Now, that's, an organ that's someone affiliated with the NYPD. That population is less than 0 .009 of the population of New York City. Now, what they're touting there is saying only the bad people go on this list. I know what you're thinking. Uh, what determines that sub subjective view of a bad person, right? Because this is gun crimes. Check this out. This is where it gets really slippery. I think you guys know where I'm going. Gun crimes in New York City look a little bit different than gun crimes in Mississippi. Check this out. He continued, and we look at that list. The majority of these individuals also have previous felony convictions, prior gun convictions, open gun arrests. I'm going to stop it there for a second. That's the important part right there. In New York City, you can't really have a gun without the proper licensing, without the proper hoops you have to jump through. You have a Second Amendment right, you are enabled to have a gun via the Constitution, but in New York State or New York City, the rules are differing, right? Well, if you violate something that is illegal in New York City, but you don't violate something that is, I don't know, say legal in Atlanta, North Carolina, Peoria, Illinois, Peoria, Illinois wherever, I mean, Indiana, wherever Peoria is, I think it's Indiana. But my point is, in a different city in the United States, you can get on this list for something that's constitutionally allowed in other areas, which will get, they're going to get into trouble. But let's continue. These are the individuals that are driving gun violence in New York City. And these are the very individuals that our gun violence suppression division is focused on. Okay, This is where it gets a little scary. While LaPetrie didn't provide specifics about the methodology for adding suspects to the list, of course they didn't, Advocates for civil liberties who were against surveillance said witnesses and victims may be added to the list. So if you were a victim or a witness, you're on that list? That sounds kind of crazy because if you're in New York City and something happens on a block, that's like 2,000 people. That's a pretty big list. In addition to the shooting suspects and those with gun charges, and said law and law enforcement officials concur, the outlets reported. This last one right here is where it gets really scary because think about this. If it was not the person that's on the list, but a family member, a wife, a husband, a child, this is where it gets really scary. Quote, they run your license and then this big red flag pops up, Vitaly told the outlets. And now all of a sudden, the cop has got his hand on his gun, wants to put you in cuffs while they search the car, and it escalates the whole interaction. Now that might be some hyperbole, right? But the point is, it does escalate 
whoever's in that car if they're on a list that they didn't deserve to be on a list because the government created a list. And that's a big concern for me, and that's where it gets a little, it gets a little uncomfortable because if you look at this federally, if you look at this with gun rights, if you look at it through any of these different things, if you're on a list, that hasn't typically worked out very well in the past across multiple governments and multiple countries in multiple different time frames. And that's what I've got for you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will see you tomorrow morning on The Bullet Points. I'm Braden. See you later.